Well, good day, YouTube, and, uh, did that even start? Yeah, it did. I'm just stupid. I'm just stupid. Uh, so let's try this again. Good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today we are looking at a beer from the Niagara Brewing Company, which is a new brewery here in Niagara Falls. This is Niagara Brewing Company's, uh, well, and it says here, Made in Canada, Niagara Premium Lager. So there we go, Niagara Premium Lager. Look at that, they have the falls on the label. Oh, isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? All the way around. Uh, what do we have here? 4.5% alcohol by volume. Niagara Brewing Company is right between the Rainforest Cafe and the Guinness Book of World Records. So, right in the heart of Clifton Hill. Have fun finding parking, have fun uh, doing anything. But the beer's not bad from what I've had so far. Uh, nature's Wonder. Niagara Falls is celebrated for its natural beauty and force. Our Niagara Premium Lager has been crafted to honor in honor of its awe-inspiring power. This thirst-quenching premium lager offers a clean drinking, uh, medium-bodied brew, distinguished by malt sweetness and hop flavors. It's as impressive as the mighty Niagara itself. Now, see that is a sweeping, sweeping statement that. Uh, kind of hurts to have, because this better be amazing for me to be awe-inspired. I'm going to drink from our Werther's, Worthington's uh, White Shield glass, because I just want to today. It's been about a year since I've used this glass, and apparently there was a good deal of dust in the glass. Uh, actually, I did find this glass sitting this way on the shelf, and who puts a cup on the shelf stick upwards, right? Not this guy. But other than the other than the dust and water marks, and I did rinse it out, thinking that I would have. Uh, Instead of before use, thinking that would have helped, apparently it didn't. But other than the dust and watermarks, it's a golden color. It had some nice white head. The head faded super quick. Uh, very see-through. Lots of carbonation moving up. Smell. It has a slight malt sweetness and then that uh, bready biscuity scent that both uh, flying monkeys anti-gravity light and uh, stonewall light come off with, uh, sorry, stone hammer light come off with. Just grainy, biscuity, yeasty. Doesn't smell as impressive and awe-inspiring as the falls right now. But to smell like the falls, you kind of just have to smell like dying fish, so I'm kind of glad that didn't happen. Cheers. Okay. Okay, it is basically what you'd expect from most craft loggers, right? It has some flavor, especially most craft loggers that are in in the tourist area, in a place where they're going to get a lot of foot traffic from not necessarily craft beer enthusiasts. So I can't be mad at the beer, it is exactly what it should be. It has a bit of malty sweetness, it has a lot of breadiness, it has a lot of an English ale-like feel to me. A little bit of lemon and grapefruit on the back end, but very minimal, very minimal. It's there and then it's gone, and it goes into a soda water flavor. So, I mean, it has all the flavors, it fades super quickly. Leaves just a dry breadiness in the back of your throat. And that's exactly what they need to do for the clientele they're going to have. So for that, I have to give them a thumbs up. They did an amazing job on making a beer that both craft beer guys and macro guys alike can get behind and enjoy. I'm not sure what a, uh, what a pint costs at the, at the bar. But uh, the four four-packs I bought was $52. 
Um, so 16 beers, $52. You're looking at about, hmm, what? Three twenty-five on average a beer. Uh, some beers were more money, some were less money. This was probably the cheapest of them all. But I lost my receipt, so I can't tell exactly how the uh, breakdown went. But for three dollars, like for the three dollar range, it's a good beer. If you were going to have this at home, compared to say a Coors Light at at a bar. <coughs> Excuse me, going home with the beers, I'd probably go with Flying Monkeys, Anti Gravity, or a Stonehammer Light, um, or a nice cold macro, just just by the by the cost. However, that's not taking anything away from the beer itself. This is actually a really well made beer. Again, I could see this being enjoyed by everybody. You're just coming into a market where there is hundreds of light beers, to, well, light loggers, lighter loggers to choose from, and I don't know if it's enough to make me change from what I normally drink. It is a really good beer, though, as I said. Uh, I love the flavor of this. I love, and this is room temperature. There's nothing hidden in it. Uh, and at room temperature, it's super drinkable, too. So I love that about it. This stuff just flies down your throat. It's a very drinkable beer. Just very bready, very biscuity, very yeasty. Slight malt, slight hop. Very easy to get behind. Uh, I'd give this an 8 out of 10, really. I just don't know for sure if I would put money into it because of the cost to what I can get. But again, that's me. You might love it. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. I gotta hit the stop button. No, stop.